Let me explain to you one of the tactics used by the corporate press. You enter into a scenario where you know that by engaging in a certain behavior, you will get a certain outcome. You then do not tell the public of your involvement in said matter, and you claim the outcome was a normal thing. It's kind of vague, but let me break this down. You go to a protest. You intentionally block protesters. You as a reporter get in their way. Then the protesters get mad. And now you film it. Activists use a similar tactic. You create the news you want to exist. No better example than right now with the Elon Musk Don Lemon scandal. So as, you, as many of you know, Don Lemon was fired by Elon Musk before his show even started. Don Lemon says, I guess Elon Musk doesn't care about free speech. Well, the first thing I'll say is free speech was never, I will pay you to speech. Okay, Don Lemon. But the story is actually quite interesting. According to several news outlets and reporting from the New York Post, Don Lemon demanded a bunch of ridiculous things of Elon Musk, including a free cyber truck, an $8 million salary with $5 million up front, equity stake in X before Elon Musk canceled the show. Now, Elon, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Don Lemon's agent says, no, 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 none of this is true. None of this is true. It's absolute nonsense. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. What we are hearing from this reporting in the New York Post is that a wish list of, re- of requests was sent to Elon Musk. Elon Musk, of course, is going to deny all of these things and create the pretext by which Don Lemon could go, oh, uh, this is ridiculous. I, well, you know, he, I guess he doesn't want free speech. I'll simplify the scenario for you. Elon Musk says, Tim, I'd I'd like you to do a show on X. I say, wow, everybody, public announcement. We're going to do a show on X. I then go to Elon and say, give me $50 billion. He says, no. Okay, fine. I guess we don't get a show. Then I go and say, Elon fired me. Well, no, Don Lemon just created a circumstance in which Elon could not have hired him. Then Don Lemon goes on The View and goes, see, I told you, Elon Musk doesn't like free speech. Elon, buddy, I think he fell for this one. We knew from the get go that Don Lemon was duplicitous and not going to play fair. And this is the game you play. You try to give an inch to these corporate elites, the the corporate press, to these cultists, and they will turn around and they will stab you in the back. I don't believe Don Lemon ever had any real intention of working with or for X. I believe the list of demands was intended to make Elon recoil and say, are you nuts? So that way, Don Lemon could go on The View and go on CNN and get press. That's the game they play. I will stress, Don Lemon's agent denies this. But I want to break down for you why I actually think the denial is more duplicitous behavior. Elon Musk likens Don Lemon to spoiled child from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory after TV host demanded free Tesla Cybertruck, $8 million salary with $5 million up front and a stake in X before billionaire canceled the deal for a new show. The official reason, according to, uh, I believe, X spokesperson or Elon, is that Don Lemon was trying to do CNN on X, which doesn't work. CNN is dying. Corporate press is dying. It won't work. But I want to add, the interview has been released, and I can tell you exactly why, outside of any ridiculous demands, why, why the deal was canceled. If Don Lemon came to Elon and did this remarkable podcast-style event, I mean, I, I, I personally find it fascinating. We host a show with many guests. We've had the likes of the great uh, Joe Rogan on our show. I, I on his. Uh, we have Joe Rogan and Alex Jones at the same time. We had Kanye West. We've had many large names. We've never had Elon Musk. But Don Lemon is his first guest. He gets Elon. And it wasn't some, some great podcast. I'm willing to bet that if it was a really great show, that Don Lemon actually made this authentic sit down two hour thing that Elon probably would have said, let's, let's, let's make this happen. I'm sure Elon was thinking like, X needs a powerful podcast style news show, maybe Don Lemon could do it. I think Elon Musk made a big mistake there. But I think I, I think Elon would have absolutely honored a, a tremendous deal, probably even given the due to Cybertruck, if it was like this could be the next big news program. Instead, 
Don Lemon could not grasp conditional hypotheticals. This is funny because just last week we were talking about this with Lauren Chen. There's this question you ask. It's if you did not eat breakfast yesterday, how would you have felt a conditional hypothetical, something that either has not happened or will not happen? Don Lemon could not grasp the concept of a hypothetical. It was insane. And I'm like, wow, indicative of like a low IQ. The idea of the question is this. Low IQ individuals respond by going, but I did eat breakfast. And you're like, right, right, right. But if you didn't have breakfast, how would you feel? The typical answer is hungry, I guess. It also doesn't necessarily work because a lot of people don't eat breakfast anymore. I guess it was like a question from back when everyone had breakfast. And now, you know, a lot of people do intermittent fasting. I don't have breakfast, although I recently, I guess you could say I do. I added a protein shake into my morning routine because I got a personal trainer and I'm tracking my macros. So anyway. There's a lot of ways to answer the question, but the real the real point of the question is to determine whether or not you can understand a hypothetical conditional. Something did not happen. But what if it did? You say, OK, well, if it did happen, then I suppose X, Y and Z. Don Lemon was talking to Elon Musk about DEI and surgery. And Elon said, if you lower the standards in, in uh, medical care, eventually someone will die. And Don Lemon goes, but no one's died. And Elon says, yes. But if you lower the standards, eventually someone will die. And Don Lemon once again is like, but nobody died. (laughs) He can't grasp the concept of a hypothetical scenario. And that's the challenge with a lot of the the cult, that the, the establishment cult actors. How could Don Lemon possibly, possibly vote properly if he can't understand hypotheticals? Well, let's read. Elon Musk has compared the former CNN anchor Don Lemon to a spoiled child from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Lemon is alleged to have requested a Tesla Cybertruck, an $8 million salary, an equity stake in X together with a $5 million upfront payment on top. Man, like I could, I, I'd request substantially less. You know, if, 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 if Elon were to offer me something, say, hey, do a show on X, I'd be like, okay, here's the going rate, I guess. And it's substantially less than all of that. I guess, I suppose, I don't know if he was looking for like a full time thing, whatever. In a posting to X on Friday night, Musk simply wrote Don Veruca Salt Lemon in reference to a character from Willy Wonka. We know, we know, we know. They go on to say that, uh, uh, you know, Lemon was requesting all these crazy things. They say officials at X stated there was no final or signed agreement with Don Lemon. But a spokesperson for at UTA has poured cold water on the claim, describing it as absolute, complete, utter nonsense without an iota of truth to it. I don't buy it. Here's what I think. The alleged proposal was also former rather than whimsical with everything placed in writing in a contract sent from UTA to X in December. I do not believe X would defame libel slander UTA like that. I think what likely happened is because I've dealt with these agencies, I've dealt with UTA, not in in a similar capacity to this, but I've dealt with UTA. They're awful. I've dealt with some some, like many from the big agencies, the big three or the big five, whatever they call them. Yo, let me tell you, the contracts they produce, it's like they jump up on the table, take a dump on the table and hand it to you and say, now redline. I had a meeting with a company once. And they were like, your show is amazing. And we think you could be bigger than Ben Shapiro. And it's something like that. They were like, Ben Shapiro is really big. Take a look at this. We think your show is attractive to moderates, middle of the road individuals. And there's a big market there with the average person. It's going to be huge. And I said, this is fantastic. The, the deal was radio podcast distribution. And I said, that's something we're not that good at. We're great at social media. Our podcast stuff does, it does decently well. Like we make a lot of money on podcasts, but I know we could do better. I know we can. And so I said, by all means, this deal sounds great. We negotiated in person. I said, send me that contract. And they sent me a steaming pile of human waste. The contract was insane. I'm not going to get into the finer details, but when I hear that they were asking for this, I'm like, that's exactly what they do. The contract I was offered was basically like, we own everything 100% and we decide if we give you anything back. And I was like, wait, 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 you're supposed to be helping me distribute this. I own the company. I have employees. And they were like, no, we own it now. And I was like, I'm not signing that. 
So I got pissed and I said, this is not what we discussed. This was not part of my negotiations. You wasted my time. And now you're sending me this waste of time further. And they said, Tim, this is normal in business. You're supposed to redline the contract and send it back. And I said, I am not going to spend $5,000 on lawyers to go through this contract to remove all of the garbage you snuck into it. And they were like, oh, well, I mean, this is normal. If that's normal for you, I'm not doing business with you. So here's what I imagine happened. Based on the news reporting that X says they got this contract from UTA. And then she says, UTA says, that's not true at all. Here's what I believe makes the most sense. UTA, United Talents, representing Don Lemon, said, we're going to ask for everything under the sun in the kitchen sink. Then when we send it to Elon, Elon can remove things he won't do. But we're going to big ask for everything. $8 million, $5 million up front, free cyber truck, equity, policy changes, all of that stuff. And then Elon, if he doesn't go through the contract, maybe we get it. The hope usually is you ask for a million things, you end up with 10,000. You ask for a thousand things, you end up with a hundred. So they're like, let's pull a big ask. They probably scoffed at this and said, this is ridiculous. And much like the, the issues I had with, my, with, with the agencies I've worked with, they probably said, this is nuts. What ends up happening? Well, Don Lemon interrogates Elon Musk on depression, his prescription ketamine use, and Trump, an interview that got him fired. So Elon Musk sits down with Don Lemon in what may be one of the stupidest interviews ever. I think Elon Musk may have bitten off more than he can chew by not reali realizing just how stupid Don Lemon is. And Don Lemon is very stupid. And Wokeness says, Elon Musk tries to explain how lowering the standards for doctors could result in more deaths. Don Lemon is unable to grasp the concept. The entire exchange is incredible. So I'll put it like this. They do the interview. Don Lemon puts it up on everywhere. He says, he says he'll put it on X, he's put it on YouTube. I think Elon Musk sat down with this guy and afterwards was like, my Lord, that is the stupidest person I've ever spoken with. Before I play the clip, I will stress the point. I believe that Don Lemon's intention was one of two things. I think his agent were, was just like, we're going to ask for everything we can. But I believe a large component of this was for Don, or and this may have been the plan B, our worst case scenario, if they reject this contract, you get to come out and say, I guess Elon doesn't believe in free speech. Don Lemon went on the went on CNN. I believe he went on The View. Let me let me let me, let me double check this because I want to make sure I get my facts right. I believe Don Lemon went on The View. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do we have it right here? Yes, he appeared on The View slamming Elon Musk. Here we go. Don Lemon puts the squeeze on Elon Musk for canceling his ex-partnership. I was a good soldier. The former CNN anchor spilled the tea on The View about his feud with the billionaire. So they give this ridiculous list of demands. And they're like, hey, look, if we get it, we get it. And if we don't get it, you can then we'll hit up ABC, we'll hit up CNN, we'll hit up MSNBC, we'll go on all these things and we'll say Elon doesn't like free speech. And that's where we're currently at. It's a remarkable exchange, though. I think the principal issue for Elon was just how tremendously stupid Don Lemon is. Let me play the clip. Uh, if if we if we lower the standards for what it takes to become a doctor, you're saying if we lower the standards, yes. but do you believe people are dying because the standards are being lowered? I, I don't. Or have I think that is, or? yes, an issue, but it could become an issue. OK, but the actual evidence in history shows the exact opposite. If you look at how minorities are treated by the medical system. Okay. What? Most doctors, okay. most doctors now are white. That's not a coherent sentence at all. History shows what most doctors in the United States have been white for a very, very long time. And medical advances have, have advanced. What point is being made here? And there are lots of mistakes in medicine. So you're saying that my doctors are have bad medical care? I'm trying to understand your logic here when it comes to <laughs> DEI because there's no actual evidence of what you're saying. No, I, I said, so if the standards, like, if, like let's say, uh, I think that particular thing was referring to surgeons. Let's say a surgeon is, uh, is asked to uh, a... <clears throat> 
a, a surgeon in training is asked to do it a series of operations under the supervision of a senior surgeon, and they get a bunch of those operations wrong. If, 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 if that happens, and yet they are still approved to be a surgeon, the probability that someone will die, I think, at some point is high. Okay, I understand that, but that's a hypothetical. That doesn't mean it's happening. I didn't say it's happening. <laughs> you, you didn't say it was happening. I said, I said it will. You, but okay, like, he did not say it was happening. He said... I believe if you do X, the probability of Y goes up. But I said, if, 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 if we lower standards, people, people will die. <laughs> but why respond to something or put something out there that has not happened? Because I could say, you <laughs> know. Because I don't want it to happen. I think we don't want to lower the lowest standards. Okay, if you look at the history of the medical industry, um, especially when it comes to black Americans, it shows the exact opposite. If you look at the Tuskegee experiment and on and on, only 5% of doctors are in America are well, black. He, he, he made a reference to the Tuskegee experiments. What does that have to do with what Elon is talking All about? All of them are white. So are you saying that if the majority of doctors are white, are you saying that, D, and there are still these inequities, right? And there's, and people still, there's still mistakes. Are you blaming DEI for that? No, I'm, just, I, I, I'm very, very, very <laughs> basically saying that if we lower standards, <laughs> Elon, poor Elon. <laughs> no wonder he nuked this guy. Look, I don't even know if the demands had anything to do with it at this point. Like at first, I'm thinking, like Don Lemon, they did this to force Elon's hand so they could run around screaming he doesn't like free speech. But now, I'm thinking that's like Plan B at this point. Uh, for what it takes to become uh, a board-certified surgeon, uh, or you know, an oncologist, or something where that where the the kind of disease we're talking about, if you make a mistake, causes someone to die, then the, the more people will die than if we don't lower the standards. Therefore, we should not lower the standards. But why do you think they're lowering the standards for minority doctors or women doctors? Or That's what, the, 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 that's what that article suggested, yes. At, at Duke University. Okay. I believe that... It, oh, man. This was too, too... Like, imagine being Elon sitting here being like, Holy crap, you can't comprehend this. I got to be honest. I've, I, I, I've dealt with this. I know all, many of you have dealt with this. Trying to explain something to someone whose brain can't do it. It's like trying to install a video game on a computer from 19... Like trying to install GTA on a computer from 1994. It's like the computer just freezes up. It's like, it's not going to happen. That's this scenario. And it's frustrating. But you'd think after two minutes and 41 seconds of Elon being like... If X, then Y. If X, then Y. Don, why can't you grasp this? And Don is just like, huh? But what? You think what? No wonder. No wonder. Do I have another clip from there? No. We have this, um, we have this from the rabbit hole who tweeted, this isn't even necessarily a hypothetical. There is evidence that affirmative action leads to lowered standards and worse doctors. If people want anecdotes, then look to Patrick Chavis, an affirmative action doctor who was found to be incompetent for the role. And so you have uh, medical school acceptance rates um, by GPA, race, and ethnicity. And it's, it's basically gone up. Wow, this is remarkable. Everyone's just being accepted more and more and more. Uh, now, I don't know. Uh, what is this? MCAT 2729. I don't necessarily know what what the what the issue here break I don't I don't know how they're uh, breaking this down. I said oh I see what they're saying that if your GPA is three point two to three point three nine, there's a high rate of black candidates who are getting these jobs, and even at the higher GPAs, a high high rate of uh, black candidates getting these jobs, and uh, substantially lower for Asian and white lowest for Asians. That's interesting. So you can certainly see this. Now I don't think this necessarily uh, shows. No, actually, I think it does. Lower grade point average. Elon Musk's point is extremely simple. If you say the standard is you must have a rating of X to become a doctor. And then people go, yeah, but we're not getting enough doctors who are black or Latino. It's like, OK, well, then for them, it should be X minus 100. You're going to get lower skilled doctors who will not be as good. If in, in my opinion, I, I, what I, I think we see what happens with a lot of this stuff is that a lot of these leftists have long said, like Black Panther, that's a diverse movie when the cast is almost entirely black. What happens is they'll say, 
It should be one white person, one Asian person, one Latino person, one black person. Then we should have one of each men and women. But that's not parity. What you'd expect to find is around 10 to 13 percent of the workforce being black based on the size of the U.S. population being around 13 percent black. But that's not what's happening. They're hiring substantially more than parity, which means you will have to go down in standards. But more to the point. Don Lemon's agent denies all of this. So let's just put it this way. Let me uh, let me let me let me grab the uh, quote from Elon Musk, I suppose. So they say a Hollywood reporter says Don Lemon's agents denying this claims published in The New York Post said he wanted all these things. I think it's very likely true. But I also think it's probably fair to say my initial assessment was I think this was give these demands to Elon. So he's forced to uh, uh, say no. Then you can run around screaming. He hates free speech. In a reply to a threat on X, Musk said he canceled Lemon's show because his approach was basically just CNN, but on social media, which doesn't work as evidenced by the fact that CNN is dying. And instead of it being the real Don Lemon, it was really just Jeff Zucker talking through Don, so lacked authenticity. X is a platform that champions free speech, and we're proud to provide an open environment for diverse voices and perspectives. X also said in a statement, the Don Lemon show is welcome to publish its content on X without censorship, and we believe in providing a platform, blah, blah, blah. I think that exchange I showed you is all you need to, to, to see to understand why Elon's like, we don't, we don't want this. Because it's, it can be viewed one of two ways. Maybe Don Lemon's really not that stupid. But Don Lemon was desperately trying to argue Elon, even though Elon didn't even make that crazy of a point. If you lower standards, then you get low standards. That's it. No, nothing else. If we say, in order to qualify for the Olympics... We're going to make it so that you only got to run 100 meters and we don't care how long it takes. Well, then a lot of people will qualify for the Olympics. That's just simple. I think that it's possible Don Lemon is trying to be faux adversarial where it doesn't make sense, thus creating an inauthentic fake interview, which makes no sense. And two minutes and 40 seconds, instead of Don just saying, I see your point, a lower standard means you're widening the door. And that means more people will come in and that will broaden the skill pool. Some will be probably worse because you're not making the standard more, uh, more, more difficult. You're making it easier. So you'll be pulling in more lower tier candidates. That's just a fact. And that, my friends, is the mental capacity of thus in the corporate press. I do want to point this out, though. I still think it's fair to say that at the very least there was a secondary plan where it's like in the event Elon refuses to go along with this or doesn't like it, you know. Then you can come out and say he opposes free speech and all that stuff. It's also entirely possible Don Lemon is just not a sentient life entity. You know, he is just incapable of thought. And so he is just confused and low IQ. I don't understand. I want to say this. How does Don Lemon have a UTA agent? Seriously, how do people like Cuomo and Lemon get these anchor positions? They, They exhibit no merit. You know, I'm grateful for the Internet. I'm concerned about the internet at the same time, but I'm grateful because it allows the meritocratic rise of people who actually can make good stuff. Not always. It also allows crazy people to do crazy things. But Don Lemon and Chris Cuomo and uh, Caitlin Collins and the others on on CNN are examples of handpicked NPCs. They are not very smart people. They don't have great talent, but they can read a prompter and they can read it very well. Well, okay, that's the job they get. When Don Lemon is taken out of that environment, this is what is produced. That's the secret of the corporate press. No talent. They just hope to control the machine so they can force you to listen to what they want you to listen to. Not anymore, though they certainly try. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 4 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all then.